Hi everybody, I'm Tim from troutandfeather.com and in this fly tying video we're going to talk about the two most popular types of hackle for dry flies, saddle hackle and capes. Stay tuned. Fly tying itself as a sport is really difficult to navigate, yet when hackle enters the conversation, it becomes just downright complicated. Imagine walking into a fly tying store for the first time knowing that you have to buy hackle. For starters, you get directed over to the hackle section and you have all these different packs. 100 packs, dry fly packs, bugger packs, micro hackle, soft hackle, wet fly hackle, saddles, capes, I mean you know where I'm going. From that next standpoint you start to look at the different designations and the grading systems and you have gold, silver, bronze, ones, twos, threes, pros. There's so many different grades, so many types of hackles out there that it can definitely be overwhelming and really confusing to not only the beginning tire but also those more at that intermediate range at times because it just seems like there's always more hackle that's just bursting onto the fly tying scene. My intent of this video is really just to help everyone first have a general understanding of the different types of hackle out there that we're going to be using in dry fly applications and then more specifically talk about the main differences between saddle and capes because saddles and capes are really popular for their dry fly applications yet a lot of people really don't understand the differences between the two and I want to make sure that you do know them so you can make an informed decision whenever you go to purchase them because as all of you know they can be quite expensive. So let's first just kind of take a step back and talk a little bit about hackle in general. Well for starters you can get hackle from a lot of different birds out there yet in this video whenever I'm referring to it we're talking about hackle that's coming from a chicken. Now there are two main types of hackle that we kind of think about and that's soft hackle and dry fly hackle. Now whenever I say soft hackle I basically mean hackle that's marketed for wet flies and we base that soft designation based on the fibers. They are really flexible, they move really easily, and they really don't do a, a really good job at supporting a fly. So you can imagine tying a hackle on that the moment you wrap that stem around the shank of your hook, instead of those fibers just staying straight up, they're just gonna curl back a little bit. That's more of wet fly hackle, and that's great hackle if you're tying flies that you intend to go below the surface of the water and you want those fibers to just undulate in the, the current or in the water as that fly goes down or as you pull it up. Whereas from the other end of that spectrum, we have what we call dry fly hackle, and that's really stiff fibers that are intended to support the fly, either on top of the surface or right in that surface film. So those are our two main designations that we have. So whenever you go to purchase it, you gotta to say to yourself, do I want hackle that's going to be supporting flies, dry fly hackle, or do I want that really soft material that's really intended for wet flies, for streamers, those, those flies that I'm gonna be fishing below the water surface. Now, let's start moving towards the saddle versus capes, because as I mentioned, this video is slanted towards the dry fly tire. And those are the two main choices that you're going to have whenever you purchase your hackle. Now, let's just talk about a chicken. Now, if you can visualize a chicken, I think I can, even though I've never raised them, though right now I think it's really in vogue to be raising chickens. My mom is talking about purchasing some, and I am absolutely gung-ho for that because I'll have a hackle supply just a few miles away, plus Heather and I will have all the eggs that we can eat. But let's get back to this discussion. Whenever I think about a chicken, we really have these fibers that are found all over them. And there's a lot of great ha hackle and feathers that we could be using for fly tying, but let me talk first about where necks and where the saddles come from. Let me put my mug down. This is what we call a cape, otherwise referred to as a dry fly neck. Now these necks, they come from basically just what it sounds like. The cape will come from that neck area around the neck of a chicken. Next we have a saddle. And this is a saddle. You've probably seen these. They have just a lot more feathers, just tons of fibers, and they seem to hang. Now, again, visualizing that chicken, I'm not going to kind of place this on me as, as, as if I were one, but these really come from that lower back section of the chicken. If you can imagine kind of a horse and where you would sit the saddle, and they'll hang off one side or the other. So those are the two main locations for our dry fly capes and for our saddles. Yet, now it comes to that bigger question. 
which one do we want for our fly tying? Now what I'm going to do for the, for the next couple portions of this video, I'm going to change the camera angle, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to talk about both the saddle hackle and the capes specifically, basically pointing out the main differences between the two. Can they both tie dry flies? Absolutely. Are they both offered in a variety of colors? Yes. Can you purchase them and cut them in half and share them with a friend? Yes. But why would you select one versus the other? And that's what I really want to talk more about Again, so you can make that informed decision because these things can start anywhere between $40 and $50 and go well into the $100 range. So with that said, let's first start with saddle hackle. I'll just zoom in on it a little bit and we'll talk about some things that we noticed that are different from the capes. Let's start off by taking a look at this saddle hackle. Now if you go to look at a saddle hack on a fly shop or if you purchase one and you take it out of the packaging, the first thing you're going to notice is that there are a ton of feathers. And if you turn it upside down, you'll see them just cascading and just going crazy. And it's that amount of feathers and the length of feathers that really separates these saddles from a neck. Now let's kind of take a look more, we'll say in depth at this hackle. For starters, if I would take one individual hackle, we'll say near this end, and just bend it a little bit, the fibers are going to just kind of jump up, jump to attention. And if I would measure the length of those fibers there, if I did the same thing at one near the middle, and also if I did the same thing at one near the end, those fibers are going to be relatively the same size. And that's something really important to keep in mind is that you don't have a really wide range of sizes. In fact, we have a very narrow range. Now that can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing. In this case, if you look at this specific saddle hackle, and this is kind of like a bar done, this hackle is really fine tuned to tie some smaller flies in that 16 to 20 range and that's about it. If I search for a 22, I'm probably not going to find one. If I search for a 14 hackle, there might be a couple on this saddle, but in general, this is really just refined down. So it should tell you right away that if I need to tie a size 18, we'll say blooming olive, I can tie it with this hackle here. And I tie a lot of flies in that size range using this color, which is why it's one of the ones that I prefer to keep in my collection. Now there's something else we have to keep in mind, and that's these fibers are really long. Nearly all of them are geez, almost six inches or longer on this, on this particular saddle. And that's a really great thing because if I compare that to some of the, the 14s on this cape, they may only be, I don't know, four inches long. Now, does that matter? Yes and no. If I'm using some shorter feathers on a cape, it may require me to use some type of a hackle plier whenever I'm wrapping them around the shank of the hook. Whereas with the saddle, whenever I tie them in place, I don't need any hackle pliers until I've used it after maybe three or four flies because I can simply grip it at any point as I wind it around, tie it off, clip the hackle, and then set it to the side to use again. So in this case, in my mind, I can tie a heck of a lot more flies from a saddle hackle, though I'm restricted by the size range. The other thing that I want to kind of point out with these saddle hackles is sometimes if you luck out you might include some schloppen, which is a really funny name, but I really just refer to it as these larger hackles kind of on this side that have a lot of webbiness to them. They're more of a wet fly type hackle. And let me see if I can find any schloppen that may have kind of snuck into this one. I think I have one that's kind of like a schloppen hackle right here. And this would be a hackle that we would not use on a dry fly. It's really webby. They're really flimsy. They're, they're not stiff at all. But whenever the water will touch these fibers, these fibers will just nearly breathe. And they'll really just flow with, with the current. So this is the type of a fiber that I would use on a woolly bugger. And it would be really just a great feather to use on one. So to kind of wrap up this saddle hackle overview, Number one, your size range is restricted. You have a, a much sm smaller size range, but in general, you tend to get more hackle. The fibers that you get, or these feathers, are longer feathers, and every now and then you might also get some schloppen. 
Now, the one thing I need to point out, sometimes I've ran into some saddles that tied a much wider range than I thought they would. Because in general, I kind of think that if you can get two hook sizes, maybe three hook sizes out of a saddle, you're doing good. I've run into some where I've been able to get maybe four or five hook sizes, but that tends to be a rare instance. By, by, not by any means is it what you, ex you should expect whenever you're purchasing a saddle. So now let's kind of shift our gears and talk a little bit about capes. Now let's examine this neck, otherwise called a cape. For starters, kind of think about everything I just said about the saddle hackle, and now let's reverse it for this. The saddle hackle, we have a really small size range. Now when we're looking at this neck, we have a much wider size range. If I think about this as the bottom, middle, and top, we're gonna have a ton of smaller sizes in this bottom section. I'm talking down into the 20s, we'll get into some 18s, 16s, somewhere in this range. And then as we move up, we're gonna bump into 14s, we're gonna get into the 12s, and then possibly even 10s at the very top. So we really have to kind of keep that in mind when we're looking at this. Now the other big difference is the length of the feathers. Whenever I was showing you some of those saddle hackles, they could be six inches or longer. Whereas on this neck, the longest ones are going to be around four inches. And I'm talking about in the sizes that I'm going to use the most often. So we're not gonna be able to tie as many flies with one particular feather as we will with the saddle hackle. Then the final kind of thought about it is, once we use, we'll just say this entire section, maybe that's where all the 16s are right in here. Once we've used all those 16s, we're done. We have a bunch of 18s, we might have some 20s, we'll have some 14s and 12s, but then we have to say to ourselves, what should we do next? So kind of keep that in mind whenever you're going to purchase either that cape or that saddle because with these necks, you have a really great range. But if you know you're only going to be tying specific sizes, then you may wanna to lean towards the saddle. Now I love this particular one. This is a medium done neck. The other kind of really nice thing about necks is whenever you look in this upper section of them and you pull out some of the larger hackles, they still have stiff fibers on, but they're longer. So these are the ones that I like to pull somewhere in this range, and I'll pull a couple of these off, and then I'll use these fibers for my tailing for dry flies, because they will work perfectly for that. Then you don't, you don't have to go out and purchase something such as micro fibbits to kind of pull up into that area. So now the one thing I'd like to mention before I, I get into some tips and some recommendations is Related to what I had said at the beginning of this video when I talked about the grading system and how when you walk in you can see all these different grades and I want to just talk about what will separate a higher quality neck or saddle from a lower quality one. Number one, it's something I just talked about. You might find on, on this neck itself, these are, these are some really nice lengths of feathers. However, if you have a lower quality neck, those feathers are not going to be anywhere near this length. They're going to be much shorter. You may only be able to get one or possibly two flies out of one feather, whereas there's some flies in here I can get two or three, or I'm sorry, there's some feathers in here that I can get two or three flies out of. Number two, the higher quality necks, the higher quality saddles will have what we call a higher barb count, which is a little complicated for those of us that aren't involved in the actual feather industry. But if you could imagine taking this and counting the number of individual barbs there are, basically individual fibers there are in a given range, and then comparing that to a lower quality, um, we'll say neck, there are many more barbs in this case, which whenever that person who goes to grade them, whenever they simply look at all those barbs in different spots on this neck, they say, hey, this is one that will have, it has a higher barb count, thus I'm gonna kick it more towards that quality tier. Next, something else that they use in the grading is the color consistency. They want to see that it's relatively the same color the entire, the entire way throughout. Now, if it's dyed, it, it tends to be a little bit easier to get that color consistency, but even when dyeing hackle, it doesn't all come out perfectly. And if they notice that there's different splotches in different areas, even if it has really long fibers and a higher barb count, they may downgrade it a little bit simply because of that color consistency. And another thing that they kind of look for are what we call really strong stems. These stems that you're able to flex, but they also really will help maintain that whenever you turn it and you lock it against that, um, the shank of the hook, it's going to stay there. So again, those, those higher quality hackles will have those stronger stems. 
And finally, whenever we talk about, we'll say, necks and capes, they are able to tie into those really small sizes. I'm talking about the mid-20s. And you'll find those down here in that range. Now, 20, 30, 40 years ago, it was extremely difficult to find high quality hackle that could tie really small sizes. Now there are so many hackle providers out there that it almost seems that finding a neck or cape to get those smaller sizes is just something you can do any day of the week. But don't take that for granted. It's really nice to be able to pull up some of these smaller ones and say, geez, I can tie a size 26 if I wanted to with that particular feather. So I wanted to just briefly go over that grading system and some of the, the characteristics that would separate something that would be designated a higher grade from a lower grade just by using this cape. Now with that said, let's kind of wrap this up and I'll jump to the final segment of this video. To close out this video, I'd like to give you a couple of tips that have really seemed to work out for me over the years. The first one is really simple. If you're stuck between a couple different colors or maybe a couple different types of hackle, then give your friend a call and see if he or she will split a couple different hackles with you. In that case, the two of you get to try out a couple different colors, maybe a couple different types, and you get to save a few dollars because we all know hackle can be quite expensive. Now remember, if you do decide to split some hackle with a friend, whenever you go to cut it, Make sure you cut it and you cut from that reverse side, from that back side. Use a razor blade. Make that first cut really shallow and then a little bit more significant for the second one because you don't want to cut the whole way through in that first swipe and really just trim some of that hackle. So take your time whenever you're doing that. The second tip is a really simple one, but it's one that I think some people forget to do. I know I had in previous years and that's when in doubt, call somebody email somebody and ask them, but most importantly, share with them the types of flies that you tie on a regular basis. I know a, a few different owners of some, of some hackle companies, and they say the easiest way for them to get hackle in someone's hands is for them to talk to that person and figure out exactly what types of flies that person ties. For instance, if you tie a lot of sulfurs or you tie a lot of atoms, you can call up a lot of these companies and say, hey, I tie size 14, 16, and 18 sulfurs. What type of hackle do you have that will match my tying needs? And they will absolutely try to get a couple different in your hands for you to check out. In fact, I know of some different people that will actually send you six different hackles, allow you to take your time to look over them, and then send the ones you don't want back. That is definitely a rare thing, but there are some places like that out there, especially some of the smaller companies. So definitely check those out. But you can also just post a question on a forum or by all means even reach out to me via email and I will be happy to try to figure out what hackle you're looking for and what hackle will definitely enhance your tying. Next, let me talk a little bit about some recommendations. First, the big one is do you go saddle or do you go cape? And that is a really tough question. But I think we can kind of base it on the tying and on the types of flies that you're tying on a regular basis. For most beginners, I pretty much will always say, when in doubt, go with a cape because it's gonna give you that flexibility. You're gonna have a much wider range of sizes and you know that if there's a new fly that you're trying to tie in a different size, you're probably going to have a hackle to match it. But if you're a more established tire or if you're someone that knows exactly what sizes you tie a lot of, then go with a saddle because you know you're gonna get a ton of hackle in those particular sizes that you're looking for in that perfect color. Now, some people will ask me, which ones do I prefer? And it's a really tough answer because some years it's saddle, some years it's necks. I can tell you for my first maybe four years of fly tying, I had nothing but capes. Then I went on like a seven year Sackle, saddle hackle rage that I just bought all the ones that looked really good to me. And it seems to just flip flop on a regular basis. Right now, uh, anytime I go to a fly tying show or a fly tying shop, I'm always looking through the necks. For some reason, I'm just drawn to them at this moment. But 2016, 17, I'm sure I will gravitate back towards saddles. I can tell you I have a ton of both. I probably won't say the exact number. I don't want Heather to cut off my, my hackle buying, but I love to buy hackle because I, I know that I'm going to be using it for years to come. 
Next, let's kind of jump into another area of recommendation, and that's the colors. I have made a previous recommendation in the past on another one of my videos. It was called Selecting Saddle Hackle. Um, in fact, it was the, the video that kind of inspired this one. I originally wanted to make a video that really just explained what you should look for whenever you're going to purchase Saddle Hackle. And from that video, I got lots of questions saying, yeah, but what about necks and capes and what's the differences between the two? Hence this video. But if you'd like to watch that prior video, I'll put it somewhere up on the screen right now, I'll link to it, but I'll also put a link in the description of this video so you can go and watch that one. Um, it's been a very popular video for me and I'm really happy that it's helped so many people out there. But in that video, I gave specific color recommendations and I'm going to do the same here. I basically think of Hackle in two tiers. That top tier, the colors that you absolutely must have in your collection, and that second tier, the colors that you can kind of fill in. My number one color to have is Grizzly. There's no question about it. There are so many flies that I tie with the color Grizzly. A lot of them don't even call for that color, yet I use it. It is just the perfect color. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. So if there's one to go out there and buy tomorrow, it's a really high quality Grizzly Hackle. Number two is a light or dark dun, preferably a barred. Think back to this saddle that you saw, how it has that barring. I really just love that barring and hackle. Um, I've, I've said this before, I, I read this somewhere, I can't remember it off the top of my head right now, but that barring just almost provides that proof of life that I think sometimes fish might be looking for whenever they go to strike that fly. And then finally, the last color that I really prefer to tie with is a barred ginger. Um, I think if you have those three, that grizzly, the dun, the ginger, you combine those, you can tie a heck of a lot of flies to cover most of your bases, especially in the Eastern United States. Moving into that second tier of colors. The first one is a brown or a furnace. Um, I think brown is just a really indispensable color. You can get away with using it on a lot of flies. It's a great color to have in your collection. Next is black. It's just all purpose. It's a, it's a dark color. Anytime you're looking for that dark color, you can go to black and, and be comfortable with it. And then the last color in tier two is going to be cream, basically the other end of that spectrum. I'll list those colors again in the description of this video. Well, with all of that said, that wraps up this video on basically explaining the differences between saddle hackle and capes. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page in the comments section, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. And I have a question for all of you, especially those of you more intermediate to advanced tires. What do you prefer, saddles or capes? And if I had to hold you to one, what would it be? I owned up and I said, right now, I prefer capes. So I'm curious, what about everybody else? If you had to make that recommendation to a beginner, what would it be? Or would you tell them to buy one of those multi-packs that come with a couple different colors or those 100 packs that have just a select number of fibers? So as I always mention, check out the comments section because it's kind of a resource page of its own. Speaking of resource pages, if you'd like to watch more of my fly tying or fly fishing videos, check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page, and if you like that, you'll receive regular fly tying and fly fishing updates. Well, once again, thank you everybody for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, differences between saddle hackle and capes. Thanks, guys.